I am back today to talk to you about all of my bassoon accessories that live in my bassoon case. Um, my bassoon case that my heckle lives in is my Cobalt case. Um, I purchased this when I um, had the bassoon repaired because the extra keys that I had added on, they had to actually cut out portions of the case to fit the key mechanisms. Um, so I'll talk to you about the accessories and also the keys that I had done as part of the repair work in my heckle journey. If you missed the uh, video where I talk about purchasing my heckle, um, finding out the amount of repair it needed and shipping it off, sending it to the spa and then having it come back, I will link that in the description box down below. Okay, so let's dig in. I purchased a Cobalt case. Uh, the Cobalt case is great because it offers the backpack function, but also the ability to carry it like it's a briefcase. It has two large packets on the outside that you can store things in, and then also on the inside, it has two main uh, compartments right next to the bassoon to store things. Okay, so on the inside of the case, the first thing that I know, I can't really hold it up too much for you, but there's the bassoon. Um, the main compartment to the upper left, I usually store my reeds. I carry at least 12 reeds with me at all times. Um, so I have two separate reed boxes. Um, this box are reeds that I'm breaking in right now. Um, I do catalog the reeds by thread colors. So if you're curious what these are, uh, this is uh, Rigotti. These are Donzi from various years. And this is the Madeira cane that I've been trying out. It has actually made it into the travel box. And then there is a piece of Cote d'Azur, which has also made it into the travel box. So um, if you wanna make sure that you keep up with the cane trials with me, cause I am trying about um, 10 different types of cane this summer, be sure to subscribe because I will take you through the uh, pros and cons of each type of cane that I'm trying, both uh, just gouged and also gouged shaped and profiled. I'm trying both types. My other read box is not as exciting. Um, these are my standby go-to have made it through mass performances. And yes, they are all the exact same color because the uh, gouge shape and profile and the type of cane, this was a great batch. Um, so these are my old standbys. Next up, um, any bassoonist will know, sitting in front of trombones and trumpets, um, I have a set of earplugs. Um, these earplugs I love to get because they have a string on them, so I can just set them on either side of my neck, and then if I need to, I can pop them in, and I'm not worried about trying to fuss and stick them under anything, so I can just pop them really quickly into my ears if I need. Everybody's favorite, a seat strap. Um, the seat strap I like to use is the one with the S hook. Uh, court grease. Um, I always make sure and buy the minty kind. Um, I like the minty kind because uh, who doesn't want to give their bassoon good smelling breath first off and it's just so much more satisfying to uh, take care of your bassoon when it has like minty fresh breath. A pencil to mark my music. Um, a lot of different orchestras I've worked with have problems with mechanical pencils. Um, they can get fined if you're using mechanical pencils on some of the uh, scores that they're renting. So I always make sure that I do have a number two pencil with a good eraser, but that it's also not mechanical. And because these do have a tendency to break um, and you can't just push more lead out, I usually try to carry more than one at, one, at all times. Okay, the next little bits I have stored in these little pouches that I got um, when I purchased some jewelry online. Um, these are my Lafrec sound panels. In the larger of them, I have the ones that look like uh, the brass, and these go from the bell all the way into the long joint. Um, they hook the two together. Um, I hauled these a couple of months ago. Love them. They do actually affect the sound. I did think that they were witchcraft, but I've since actually started using them a lot more. Um, I'm sad to see how fast they tarnish. This one that sits on the outside tarnishes so easily, and this one that's usually on the inside is less tarnished. Um, I think if I switch to velvet pouches, that's gonna be less of an issue though. But for the sound color, um, if I'd gone with all gold, it was just not the right sound for my instrument. So if you are looking into buying these, try several different types because every instrument is going to react differently. It's like matching a vocal, I think. Um, and then I have, of course, the ones that hook from the vocal to the wind joint. Um, and I purchased the gold for those because that was just the best matchup for my little hook of bassoon. I do carry 
uh, Leger plastic reed with me for emergencies. I mean, it is fantastic if you never want to have to soak a reed, scrape a reed, you go to a weird weather climate change from what you've made your reeds to and you just need something to pop it on and play, or if you have absolutely no warm up time and you just, it's go, you get there five seconds before you need to. I, I mean, as a musician, we always try to get there like so early, but I mean, for emergencies, always good to have in my back pocket. Of course, a swab. Um, I love the silk swabs because they're so much more absor um, absorbent. And I also like these ones that have the chain on the end so that they don't um, hurt the inside of the, um, the wind joint and I can pull it through both the wind joint and the boot joint. So universal silk swab and of course mine's in purple. Next one is probably gonna be controversial, but you know, um, I'm showing you everything that's in there, so we might as well just dig in. Uh, this is a bassoon mute. Um, they sell these. I can't remember where I bought mine, but I do say that, you know, usually they have the point on the end, and this one does not have the point on the end. Um, this one doesn't have the point at the end because I cut it off. Um, these mutes are fantastic. They do have holes in them so that when they sit in your bell, they do let sound through. Um, and it will help you if you have like a triple pianist, sis, 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 the mo passage. Um, but it can overly affect the intonation. But if you cut the end off, then you don't have to worry about that. So um, for emergency situations, I do have a bassoon mute and I have customized it by cutting the end off. Uh, next up, I have a bassoon strap for playing standing up. Then we have, of course, the bassoon. Um, I know that I have mentioned that I've gotten some crazy keys added on. Um, I think the one that will be most noticeable as I put my bassoon together is going to be the extra E flat key. Um, the extra E flat key is on the wind joint to the boot joint. And if you don't get your bassoon together just right, it it's not going to play. Um, so that is one of the pitfalls of having this extra E flat key, um, but it's super helpful for C, uh, D, C sharp and D sharp in both the main octave and then just above um, for both of those and auxiliary E flat fingering. Um, and then it's also, uh, I've heard, come in handy for G and A, although I haven't used it on G and A. So what it is. Okay, let's see how close I can get. Oh, I don't want to go out of focus, but okay. Do you see on the front of the bassoon here at the base, um, there's this extra mechanism that links from the boot joint up to the wind joint. Um, and that by adding this, if I press this key here, it uh, moves the E flat for me. So this is an extra auxiliary bit that I did add to my bassoon. Um, supposed to be amazingly helpful. I have not had as much time to play with it as I'd like to, to give like a full video on it. So if you are interested, just give me a little bit of time, let me know, and I'll go ahead and go through that. Um, other key things that I've had added on, um, in the back, um, of course I have the rollers from the whisper key to the C sharp key. Um, I really like that. It helps the sliding of the fingers. So it does improve some of the technique. Of course I have the high C and the high D key um, that I did make sure that it has. Um, the bassoon originally came with a key right here that I definitely had removed um, because um, for me, when I play bassoon, that is a tone hole that usually leaks spit. And the last thing I want is a spit leaking into that. And it doesn't need it. I much prefer the feeling of the ring, quite honestly. Um, so those are the main different keys that I think you would notice if you were sitting right next to me. Okay, so what else is in there? Um, I have two vocals. Um, I have the vocal that when I originally purchased it, it came with. Um, so that's going to be the Heckle CD2. Um, it does match the instrument, but it didn't give me the projection or the color variance that I was looking for. So I did end up buying another vocal to go with it. Um, and both of these are typical style bends. Uh, for my Puchner, I use the English bend, but on the Heckle, I've just been using the regular bend. Um, this is a silver plated uh, C2XL. It's a heckle vocal as well and it's silver plated and I absolutely love it. It is such a good match for the heckle bassoon. I do have to say that this is one of the things that I don't like about this case. I'm not sure that you can completely see it but um, on the front 
of the bassoon, there are these pockets, right? And I can put things in there and they weight the case, um, but there's this little strap that holds it to the base of the case. And as the weight of the bassoon moves out of it and the weight of the goodies that are still in the outer pockets are there, it can pop the case so then it ends up sitting I don't know if you can completely see, but it's like in a V. I'll try to get a close up on that for you. But um, I guess I could just cut this strap, but I always hate to do that because then I'm like, what if I want that back later? And Well, I guess it's just sewn together. I could undo the stitching, but I don't know. If you guys have this case and you've cut the strap or you've dealt with this, please leave me a comment because um, it's been almost a year now and I really am contemplating just cutting the strap because I don't like the way it pops like this and it makes me feel like my bassoon is slightly um, in like not secure in there when I have accessories in the outer case. Um, my uh, Pukner lives in a Bona case and that doesn't seem to be as much of an issue uh, but I can't switch them because of the extra mechanism that I had added onto the bassoon that the bassoon case is cut out for now so that that rod that stretches down to the boot joint off the wing joint um, is cut out to fit that so I'm kind of stuck with this one um, but if you want a case review on which case I like better and the pros and cons of each of them because they're both great it's just which one there are options and everything has goods and not so goods. Um, okay, um, I have my magnetic reed soaking cup which just latches straight onto a stand so that I can soak my reeds on the go. Um, and I always keep this in the outer pocket and never in the bassoon case because I am so scared. Even though I've never really had a problem with it leaking, I'm just not gonna take that chance. Um, I have my Korg CA30 chromatic tuner so that I can double check my crow and my overall pitch, uh, making sure that I'm good to go, making sure the reed is not dying and starting to go flat. My trusty 22 gauge brass wire. And my tool pouch of tools that I travel with at all times. Um, this is a little leather pouch that I picked up probably my second year of college, um, maybe from Forest, I'm not sure, it was quite some time ago. It has a zipper on the outer edge. Um, inside it has an upper little pocket, and in that upper little pocket I carry a uh, contrabassoon plaque. I love contrabassoon plaques because I can split the sides of a reed and really get into those rails if I want to, whereas smaller plaques don't allow me that same ability to split the rails. So I usually use a contrabassoon plaque. Um, sandpaper. And usually there's some razor blades in there. I think I might have used those at the last gig. Um, my rigger pliers, a knife, a ruler so I can double check the measurements, and really tiny in here, I do have a screwdriver uh, with me at all times so that if I start to see that a screw is getting loose, I can fix it on the go. Uh, a pencil, there's that second pencil I was telling you about. Um, and then a series of files, rat tail, diamond, and flat edge files. Um, of course, a mandrel so that I can do any kind of work I need to. And even though I never, but rarely would ever use it just to have it on hand and so I always know where it's at, I do have a Rieger reamer. In the larger main pocket, um, let's see. <laughs> Okay, this is left over from the last gig. I really haven't cleaned out my case. Um, I have a concert black top because, well, we're prepared. Um, I have this fear that I'm gonna end up at a gig and I'm not gonna have some element of concert black with me. Um, so I usually have like randomly in my car, whole outfits of concert black and uh, including black concert socks because um, yeah, the fear is real. Um, this is one of my favorites. Uh, it's by Winter Silks, and I love wearing silk on stage because of its ability to breathe um, and to also help with the sweat because I, I mean, I don't mean to be gross, but let's be real. I mean, I'm on stage, those lights are hot, working hard, and uh, it, the sweat happens. So um, this, I find, is awesome to make sure that I keep cool on stage, but also um, that it feels like it breathes and it's absorbing any moisture that happens. So feeling good. And then finally, let's see here. I've got some music, of course. I've got some Bach. Um, 
Ooh, great book, one of my favorites. I've been looking for this. I'm Glad I know where it is. Um, this is the um, Advanced Redesign Testing Procedures for Bassoon by Mark Eubanks. He was my first real bassoon teacher in Oregon and he is a reed guru. He started uh, the Arundo uh, Reed Company and has since sold it. Um, but his ideas that are in here for finishing bassoon reeds are so good. Um, I think I was using this to work this is in my case because uh, it has some multiphonics in it and um, Brian Christian, who is helping me write a piece right now, uh, he is writing it for me to perform, asked me what some of my favorite multiphonic fingerings were and the first multiphonics that came to mind were the first, first multiphonics that I learned from uh, Mark Eubanks. Here's a picture of him from back in the day. Yeah. Um, and let's see here, uh, then I have just a book of all the most common uh, bassoon excerpts so that I'm making sure that I'm getting those. Um, I have them in a separate booklet that I keep in my case so that um, my practicing on them is consistent. And also like, um, I don't know if you can see in some of them, but I have like a uh, metronomic markings in the top right hand corner of like where my double tongue was each day and if it's improving. And usually I try to date that as well um, so that I'm able to keep charts of what my progress is and maybe what read it was that I was playing on so I know if a read is breaking in or if it's more resistant. So um, it's kind of like my go-to book that I just keep on hand with me um, of just constants that, you know, you just, you never get away from excerpts. They're like little mini performance pieces. So uh, clear cover on that. I think I might decorate this. Okay guys, that is everything that lives in my bassoon case. Um, Maybe there were some things that you have that you keep in your bassoon case, some things that you were interested in. Um, I hope that this was helpful to you. Um, if you wanna keep up with me, I am on Instagram, it's my favorite. I tweet on Twitter, I'm trying to get into Snapchat, so if you wanna help me get into Snapchat, let, let's do it. Um, so I will leave you all of the links to all of my social media. Let's, uh, let's keep up with one another. I love hearing from you guys. Um, if there's something that you think should be in my bassoon case, I would love to hear about it. So uh, leave me a comment or if there's something in here that you want to know more about, leave me a comment. I, it makes my day to hear from you guys. I will see you guys next time. Bye! A while back in a haul, I noted that I purchased a Legere synthetic reed, meaning a plastic reed. I know, I know. And because so many of you were shocked, um, you have asked for a review of what I think about it. So many curls. They're just unstoppable, guys. The humidity. I just, I gave up.